guys, it's Danny. Today it is the 1st of April, another month has gone by and you know what that means? It is time to look at the orchids that were in full bloom during the month of March. Now this month we're gonna have a lot of Phalaenopsis. I'm not gonna show you all of them. Some of them I will postpone to next month just to balance things out, but we do have a few that are not Phalaenopsis as well. The bad news is some of these orchids had some major infestation with thrips, particularly the Phalaenopsis, which lost many of their buds, but not only as you will see. So that's the downside of this month, but other than that, most everybody did pretty okay. And I can definitely show you a few nice looking orchids. So get your wish lists ready. Remember to vote for your favorite one by following the link down below in the description. And with that said, we're gonna go extra fast today. So let's start. First and foremost, we have the Cattleya No ID, which we call Princess Jackie. And I have two possible IDs for you guys. One is Cattleya White Bridal Yuki, and the other one is Cattleya Snowflower Waldor, which is an ID found on a flower shop in Romania, actually. I looked at the parents and both of these hybrids have the Cattleya Lodigesi in their parentage, as well as the Chantilly Lace Twinkle. So to be fully, fully honest, I think I've kind of narrowed it down to Cattleya Lodigesi as being the most influential parent in this hybrid. So definitely check those hybrids out because this is a one-of-a-kind orchid with a one-of-a-kind fragrance. And some of you might already know how much I talk about this orchid. If you caught the live stream that we did during the weekend, you might know that I have another white Cattleya, which I thought was the same hybrid, but it's not. Sadly, it's already losing its flowers. It lasted very, very little in comparison to the Princess Jackie. This is just a no ID white Cattleya, and this is how we're gonna call her. The fragrance was nice, kind of faint, kind of citrusy and lemony, but that's about it. Nothing like the Princess Jackie. So even if it looked almost identical, I can assure you it's not the very same hybrid, and in my opinion, doesn't even come close to the Princess Jackie. I do still love it, I love white cattleyas and white flowers in general, so I will keep it for now, but yeah, apparently in flower shops you can find white cattleyas that look almost identical to what I'm showing you, but smell nothing like it. Another super awesome orchid we had in bloom is the Renanthopsis Mildred Jameson, which is a Renanthera monahica hybrid. This is the second time it blooms for me, and I'm so happy that this orchid did very well during all of last year. It stayed in the greenhouse, I didn't put it outside, and I was a little nervous because many people do have some issues with this particular orchid. So I'm happy to see that it did okay, along with the Monahica as well. This is not a fragrant orchid, I don't detect anything, but it's definitely a very, very pretty orchid. I love the pattern, the shape of the flowers, and of course, the color. Another orchid which delighted me with her flowers this month is the Telumnia Gyrac Firm White, which I recently purchased. It arrived with the flower spike, but I'm happy it managed to bloom because this is such a wonderful little orchid. Finally, I have my Telumnia collection in good order. And even though these orchids are not known to be fragrant, they can produce a lot of flowers. All of them are just so pretty. They're tiny, especially great for small shelves. And if it were up to me, I would have a hundred of these. Sadly, I totally failed with the Cattleya Tropical Pointer. You can see how much damage the flowers have. This is all due to thrips. I didn't see the thrips on the buds of this orchid. I didn't spray with anything. And this is the result. So I will still introduce it in the voting poll. But yeah, I'm not proud of what I did with this orchid this year. Luckily, it does bloom multiple times a year and the weather will warm up so I can put these orchids outside where hopefully some natural predators can give me a helping hand. But yeah, this orchid is not looking at its full potential. It is not fragrant, but the Tropical Pointer is one of my favorite Cattleyas actually. And normally the flowers are much, much more beautiful than this. First Phalaenopsis of the day. This is Phalaenopsis Sweet Memory Leodoro. She has fully opened her buds, but we do have more buds on this flower spike. This is a very popular Phalaenopsis hybrid. She has, as a parent, the Bellina, although you will find sources saying the Violacea. It was during the time the Violacea was the Bellina. It smells and looks quite similar to the Bellina, but it is a big orchid, very, very similar to the standard Phalaenopsis, but the fragrance is wonderful. Most people who have it 
it like the fragrance, so there is a high chance you will love the fragrance as well. And P.S. You might be hearing some weird noises in the background, like that. Maya's taking a bath. Well, somebody's having fun. <laughs> what are you doing there? There's no sun, honey. Next up, surprise, surprise, we have the Brasso Stelle Tarantula Sweet Orange in Bloom once again with a spike sprouting from the very top of the pseudobulb, which is just emerging. This is not a typical behavior for Oncidium type orchids, but it can sometimes happen. And as long as the orchid is healthy, everything is okay, no need to worry, just enjoy the flower spike. And P.S. you might be seeing some white spots on the leaves. These are bird feathers. This orchid sits on the Gemma setup with the IKEA shelf next to the cage. That's what those are, they're not insects. Next up here we have the Ivanagara Apple Blossom. Yes, I managed to bring these buds to blooming. Do you remember that last time I actually lost the buds to mealybugs? Yeah, lots of pest troubles lately, but it's okay, I'm on top of things. So this is the Golden Elf variety, which has much smaller flowers than the typical Ivanagara Apple Blossom. It smells very, very similar, although in my opinion, a little bit milder. But oh boy, look at that color. It's such a beautiful golden color. It still has those wonderful strips in the lip. And even though it seems to me a little bit tinier than the typical Ivanagara, it's still a big girl. But she is indeed a joy. And I can imagine when all of these issues with the thrips go away, a bush full of these lovely little yellow flowers. How wonderful. I really don't know what that was. Hey, Charlie. Are you waiting for breakfast? The neons are gone because guess what? They were nipping on his fins when they were eating. Can you imagine that? A very docile beta fish that was attacked by neon tetras. Mm -hmm. I know, it's weird, but it happened. So I donated them and his fins are so, so beautiful now. He's still recovering, but look at that. Look how pretty he looks now. He's a pretty, pretty boy. And I think he's hungry. <laughs> Next, here we have the Catlia that I purchased last year with the cut suit of bulbs. I don't know what this one is. I don't have an ID, so let's just call her the Golden Catlia. And what I really enjoy about this orchid is that beautiful red edging on the lip. There is no fragrance, and this orchid really looks like a Lelia hybrid. But since it's a flower shop find, it's hard to tell. And also, I'm pretty sure it is a very complex hybrid. Might actually be related to the Guarianthe oranthiaca, or however it's called nowadays. But really, for a flower shop find, I think it's fabulous, even without the fragrance. Okay, so I'm taking things in the order that I have them on the shelves. This is a no ID pink phalaenopsis. Let's just call it like that. Although I think there are some other pink fowls to show. But anyway, let's say the big pink phalaenopsis, which is missing one leaf because one of my birds tried to land on the flower spikes. And look at this. Oh, she is so top heavy that I had to find a very specific location for her. I put some other pots in front of it because this is not stable at all. But there we go, she's in bloom. I really like the sore kit, but as I was saying, I'm considering giving away some of my big phalaenopsis. And I think this will be one of them. I initially purchased it thinking it was something else. It's not the one that I was looking for. But she does have the potential to create really beautiful flower spikes. Next up, we reached the Phalaenopsis shelf. We're gonna do the mini and special Phalaenopsis this month and the big Phalaenopsis next month, just to balance things out. So this is one of my absolute favorites this month. It has a long name, but it's the Phalaenopsis Yafon Cupid or something of the sorts. And to my surprise, it is fragrant. Last year when it bloomed, I didn't detect anything, but this year I do see that it has a wonderful floral fragrance which is pretty mild, but really, really reminds me of the Vanagara. Anyway, my reason for purchasing this orchid was the color. Look at that, golden, with a little bit of white in the center and an orange lip. Who would not love that? So 
Even though I like the color, I also really like the fragrance and I would definitely recommend this orchid. Next up, a really pretty No ID Mini Phalaenopsis. Let's just call her the pink mini fowl with the orange lip. It does not have a fragrance and sadly some of the buds were lost due to thrips. But a few of the flowers managed to open nicely and I do have quite a few more buds forming there I can see. So fingers crossed that we'll have more flowers but it is what it is. You'll see with some of these orchids the display is really affected this year but what to do. Some years are just not as good as others. Next up another mini Phalaenopsis that I do not have an ID for. This one is Paloric. So we're just gonna call it the Paloric Mini Phalaenopsis, that's how you'll find her in the list. It is not fragrant, it has a pink and white and purple color, but I just love the Paloria. It is that type that I like, where the flowers open completely, but the petals are just a little bit different. So I really, really like this one, and I've seen her in shops quite a few times. I don't think it's rare, so just keep an eye out, because it's really, really lovely. And if you didn't think that white mini Phalaenopsis can be really cute as well, here is your proof. This is Phalaenopsis Soft Cloud. You wanna sit with me? So this is Phalaenopsis Soft Cloud, which is just as pretty as Maya is. And it's just, well, it's not, no honey, it's not soft, but it looks kinda soft, doesn't it? It's pretty, huh? Yeah, it doesn't have a fragrance, but it is a very, very popular hybrid in flower shops. Many of the times you will find it with a uh, terminal spike, sadly. This one has two spikes, none of which are terminal, so that's good. It might happen that one day I will have a terminal spike from this one, hopefully not soon. So yeah, as beautiful as it is, this hybrid, sadly, is prone to terminal spikes. But look how pretty it is right now. I absolutely adore it. And I think Maya likes it as well. Yeah, you do, huh? You do, huh? What are you looking at? I get so distracted by my animals, oh my goodness. We have work to do, little Maya. Next up, we have a special Phalaenopsis. This is a Polychylus hybrid. It is the Mituo Sun crossed with Mituo King Bellina. And it really is a wonderful purpley red type of orchid which has a fragrance that is a little bit spicy, in my opinion at least. I love this orchid, I have quite a few buds still coming on a different flower spike, but this is the type of orchid which doesn't create a lot of flowers at once. I don't have this shade of red in my collection, so I'm obviously super, super excited to have it. Next up, here we have another orchid that might look a little bit like J.O.'s Pink Girl, but it's not. The lip is quite different, it might be related to the Schilleriana, but it does not have the fragrance of the Schilleriana, which the mini or tiny J.O.'s Pink Girl did have. This one is just your typical miniature Phalaenopsis that is kind of pink, but doesn't really have a fragrance. However, it is a multiflora. It produces a lot of blooms per flower spike. It has branches, it can produce multiple flower spikes, and it is a joy to grow. Sally, though, it doesn't have a fragrance. Okay, so from here on, my microphone's battery died and I'm recording this after, so the visuals might not sync with what I'm saying, but it is what it is. Next up, it's the Phalaenopsis Chia E Yenlin. Thank you so much for the ID. I made sure to put a tag on it this time. It's, again, a very, very lovely mini Phalaenopsis that is very popular in flower shops. It is not rare, and furthermore, some of you told me you can find a variegated version of this one as well. I haven't seen that one around, but I'm looking out for it, because most definitely I would prefer the variegated version. It is not fragrant, but I really love that detail on the margins of the petals and sepals. It looks like a little bit of a lace, and even if it's purple, I adore it. Yeah, I know, it's weird, I'm surprised too, but I really like this orchid. Next up, we have Phalaenopsis schilleriana, which is a species. Sadly, the blooms are not fresh on it anymore, but it's okay. I have some footage when it looked good. This is one of the most popular Phalaenopsis species, not only because of her 
slightly fragrant and beautiful flowers, but also the pattern on the leaves. Furthermore, when it's mature, it can create an abundance of flowers on very branchy flower spikes. It is also one of the core parents of the standard Phalaenopsis that we find in flower shops. Sadly, the fragrance has been lost along the way, but I personally can describe it as violets, some people say it's more like Lily of the Valley. I guess you'll have to decipher yourself if you ever purchase this orchid. It's not a rare orchid. It is quite common in nurseries though, so I'm sure you're gonna find it. Next up, we have Phalaenopsis Tyne Sheen Smart, and look at that color. It is one of the most unique colors that I have in my orchid collection because it's more of a coral color, but it's pretty intense. It's somewhere in between purple and red and I just love it. This little orchid has a very very mild type of scent but I cannot really describe it. I think it's a little spicy, a little floral. I would definitely not purchase it for the fragrance but for the beautiful flowers. I do believe there is also a peloric version of this one on the market. I might be wrong. There is however a mini Phalaenopsis which looks very very similar to this one. Color wise, I don't know if it's identical. This one really has a beautiful color. Next, here we have an orchid that I told you in a previous video that I'm not sure I like. It's not supposed to look that way. I'll link you to that video down below. It is a Sogo Euclidean hybrid, which is a big lip hybrid. Yay, but it looks a little bit like Mickey Mouse, in my opinion. Look at those petals. It is also dark purple, which is not very high on my like list. It's that color that I just simply don't like. But I have to say, this orchid has been growing slowly but surely on me, so I will keep it at least one more year, see how it blooms, see how I feel about it next year. There's no fragrance either. If it were fragrant, I would definitely keep it, but maybe next year I will actually give it away. Sticking in a realm of purples, here we have another multiflora. This I don't know, it looks a little bit like Zuma's Pixie, but I don't really know because this one is fragrant. It's highly fragrant actually, but don't imagine it's something beautiful. At least to my nose it's not. It has that very typical Phalaenopsis hybrid type of scent, which is a little citrusy, but also dusty at the same time, if that makes any sense. It's not a smooth, creamy fragrance. It's rather sharp. I'm not a big fan of it, but I know many Phalaenopsis hybrids which smell like this. And I know some people who love it. So if this sounds like a good bonus, then I can only recommend this orchid because look how many little flowers it produces. And this is only one flower spike. It's full of branches and little flowers. And even if it's purple, I do love it. And here we are, real time once again. Next up, we have Phalaenopsis Tuartiana variety yellow. This is actually called Yellow Joy. And as you can see, the blooms are fading on this one as well. It is a, let's say, rarer type of Stuartiana. The most common one is the white variety, which I'm thinking of acquiring. This one is yellow and in my opinion, looks a little bit more interesting. The foliage looks interesting as well, not as pretty as the Chilariana, and also there is no fragrance. And again, it's one of those orchids which is heavily used in hybridization and many hybrids on the market actually have it in their parentage. Keeping up with the same trend, here's another one that lost its flowers, but I have footage with it. This is the wonderful Phalaenopsis Bronze Maiden. It's one that I wanted for a long time and I finally, finally have one which is better than I expected. Now, when I talked about this orchid a few videos ago, I told you it has no fragrance. Oh boy, I was so wrong. It does have a fragrance. It's so beautiful, very similar to the Chilariana, which is one of her parents, but even better if that's even possible. It's a stronger, improved version of the Chilariana because probably the Mani has something to do with it as well. I don't know, it smells wonderful, it looks wonderful. I love this orchid. Next up, we have another Yafon hybrid in full bloom. This is the green Batman. And how pretty is this one? It's another Peloric and again has the Peloria that I like. And not only that, it is also yellow and orange. How cute. I have to say, I really, really like this orchid, but I wish the flower spikes were not so tall. But I see that this is a pretty big orchid, so it might be the type that produces quite long flower spikes and quite a lot of flowers for inflorescence. It is different enough for me to love it though, so even with long flower spikes, it's okay. Oh, I do detect a little bit of a fragrance, but it's nothing that I can consider perfumey or pleasant. 
Next up, here we have Phalaenopsis Sogo grape with her incredibly dark red flowers that I absolutely adore. This year, as you can see, the orchid looks a lot better. She's not so set back anymore. We have roots, so the flowers look better and also smell better. This orchid has a little bit of a fragrance. It is a very creamy fragrance. It's not the typical floral or citrus type of fragrance. You know what it reminds me of very, very slightly? The Prince's Jacket. It has that creaminess, but nothing from the Lily of the Valley or Citrus Flowers type of fragrance. Just the creaminess. Even so, I feel it's very appropriate for this orchid because the flowers are just breathtaking. Okay, we're approaching the end of this video. Another Phalaenopsis in full bloom. This is a new one. Phalaenopsis Mituo King 997. It is so wonderful because it has a nice wild pattern on the flower. It's not a solid color. It's so, so red. But look at that pattern. It's so symmetrical and the flowers are quite large. Again, the tall flower spike, but it's perfectly fine. Bonus, it also has a fragrance, which is a little bit sweet to my nose. It reminds me of some sort of bubble gum that I used to chew when I was a kid. Can I tell you which one? I would not compare these guys to the Bellina or even to the Violacea, but it's just something there. The flowers are better than the fragrance though, so do go for this one if you like the flowers. So for now, that is it. We're not gonna look at the big Phalaenopsis because this video will never end. And I think I did a very good job at being fast today. What do you think? I'm thinking to keep these types of videos a lot more fast paced because from now on there's gonna be more and more orchids in bloom and we're gonna be here all day. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to vote for your favorite one down below in the description. And with that said, you know the drill. Like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, and looking at orchid flowers. If you wish to support the channel, do consider visiting the merch store down below and also follow me on Instagram and Facebook for even more content. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye!